Testing, testing one, two, three, hello. Can I teach you two simple and baffling card tricks in five minutes? Let's try it out. Check it out. We're gonna start with the easier and more simple card tricks. So as per the usual, I'm gonna start by shuffling up the deck because for some reason that's what everyone likes to see. And then I'll spread out the cards and have you select out any card you want. And before you even do this, I'm gonna turn around or close my eyes. Let's say you go ahead and select this card, take a look at it, memorize it. Once you're done, leave it on top, square up the deck, and then give the deck as many cuts as you'd like. This way there's no possible way that I can see what your card is or have any possible way of knowing what your card is. We'll give the deck a couple of cuts like this. And then once you're done, we're gonna turn back around and spread out the deck. I'm not even gonna look at the faces. I'm just gonna be using the connection that we have mentally. All right, so just think of your card. Think of it as best as you can. I'm gonna go here and try to read through what you're thinking. Hmm, this is, this is actually a bit tougher than I, I expected. I thought this would be a little bit easier, but that's okay. That's okay, I have a feeling that your card is not in this half. So we're gonna get rid of these cards and we'll try this again. All right, here you go. Just do your best and think of your card. Your card should be drawn to your thinking. Here we go. Oh, I'm getting a feeling. I'm getting a feeling. I don't think it's, I don't think it's anywhere here. We're gonna get rid of all these cards. I think it's somewhere right here. One of these is your card. I am not sure which one. Uh, tell me a number, well, one through, Eight, for example, let's just say six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, can get rid of the rest of these cards. We have just a couple left. I'm gonna get rid of this just to make it uneven. Here we go. Which one of these could be your card? I'm, I'm getting drawn to this side, all right? One, two, here we go. Pick a number, one or two. Two, all right, check it out. One, two, here we go. If everything worked correctly, this should be your selected card. And there it is, the five of diamonds. Let me tell you the secret of this trick and the next trick right off the bat. It uh, incorporates something known as the one way back design, which certain decks come with. So a one way back design, for example, works like this. So here I have the Pink Panther deck and I pulled this deck out because it's a bit more obvious. And you can see the Pink Panther standing up straight, right? In all of these cards. Now, if we have a spectator go ahead and select a card, let's just say this one, they take it out, they reverse the orientation of the card and put it back in regardless of how they returned it, regardless of how this deck is shuffled, all we have to do is look for the reversed Pink Panther and that's gonna be their selected card, regardless of you know what they did. As long as it's reversed and returned back in the deck, that card will be that card. We're employing the same concept with this deck, but I wanted to show you with the other deck because this one is a lot more subtle. So this is also a one-way back design and for those of you who are curious, this is the X deck by Alex Pandrea. And I like it because like I said, the one-way back design is very subtle. So here's how this first trick works. You want to start by taking the top 13 cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. By the way, before you start, make sure all the cards are oriented um, in the same upright position. You take 13 cards, turn them around, put them um, on the table, take the next 13 cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, turn them around as well, leave them on top of the deck, and uh, put the rest of the deck on top of the pile you uh, reversed. So now we have 13 reversed cards, 13, uh, 26 normal cards, and 13 reversed cards on the bottom. I like to give the deck a false cut to, before you know before we get started. So I give it a false cut, something like this, or a false overhand shuffle that you saw in my performance. Uh, so we're gonna give the deck false cut, false shuffle, I'll put the link to it on the screen and go ahead and check it out. Make sure the false cut or shuffle does not change the orientation of the deck. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell the spectator to select any card from the center of the deck. The center is very important because they're gonna select a card that is that has not been reversed. So as they're doing this, I'm gonna turn my back around or close my eyes and they select the card. Let's just say this one. This is the three of spades. I tell them to take the card, put it right on top, square up the deck and give it as many cuts as they'd like. Give it as many cuts, let's just say two, just to make life easy. And now if you take a look, when you're looking through, you'll see one card is reversed in the opposite direction uh, within a pile of many cards. So for example, these are all facing the same direction. Um, can we keep going? Now this is where the orientation switches and I'm just looking for one anomaly of the card and I can see that right here. This card is the anomaly. If I go through and look, this should be a selected card, the three of spades, and you can reveal it in any which way you want and you can see my performance for more tips on that. Oh, and for those of you who are curious, this trick is known as knee plus ultra location by Wimborough from the Encyclopedia of Card Tricks. I think we're making good time. 
Here's trick number two. Now, personally, I find the second one a bit more fun and exciting versus the first one that I showed you. So we'll start off by giving the deck a bit of a shuffle, and then I'm gonna cut the deck into two piles. Let's say as, as closely as possible, that should be close enough. So pile number one and pile number two. I, I'm gonna turn my back. I want you to go ahead and take um, three cards from pile number one, all right? Take any random three cards from pile number one, I'll spread it out like this. Take any three cards at random and pull them out, leave them right there. All right, I'm gonna turn my back and uh, you go ahead and do that. Let's just say you selected one, two, and three. Just go ahead, take a look, memorize at all of those three cards, okay? Do your best, card number one, card number two, and card number three. Now take these cards, once you have them memorized, again, take a look at them, and put them on top of the second pile, just to make things as fair as possible. Once you've done that, we're gonna rip all the piles together like this, push them right in, and then we'll even shuffle it up like this. So there's no possible way I know what those cards are, right? And I feel like that's as fair as possible. We'll even stop with a cut. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn cards over one at a time. And whenever I get the sense that I'm near your card, I'm gonna put that card over to the side. Here we go. Just do me a favor, think, uh, do your best to think of all three of your cards. Say them repeatedly in your mind. Hmm, this is, this is tough. It's very difficult to read. I'm hoping I haven't passed your card, well, your cards, but then again, I have no idea. I think this one might be one of your cards. Maybe this one as well, and maybe this one. And I'm hoping if I did this correctly, going through the rest of the cards, you should not see any of the cards that you selected. The cards you selected are right here. The Six of Diamonds, the Queen of Hearts, and the Four of Diamonds. I find this trick a bit more fun and exciting than the first one I shared with you. So you're gonna start off by first arranging all the uh, one-way back design cards in the same way, so they're all orientated in the same direction. And then you're gonna start by taking the deck out of the tuck case and giving it a shuffle right in front of your spectator, something like this. You can even give it a riffle shuffle as long as you don't change the orientation of the cards. All right, something like that, maybe a couple of cuts as well. Now you can tell the spectator that you're gonna cut the deck into two piles and just try to make them as even as possible. Pile number one and pile number two. Now here's the main, the key, the key aspect of this trick. When you're splitting it up into two piles, you wanna reverse the orientation of one of the piles. So in my performance, what I did was I did a swing cut like this. I lifted up, swung it over, but now I uh, pivoted this card um, and around my index finger while I turned it around like this to change the orientation. Okay, so this is called a swivel cut. So you're coming over here, lift up, pivot it around. This deck goes here, this deck goes here. So half are orientated one way, half are orientated the other way. You're gonna ask the spectator now to pick either of the halves, and you can turn your back around for this. Ask the spectators to pick either of the halves and take out three cards at random. So they're gonna take out three cards, say one, two, and three. Tell them to take these cards out and look at them and memorize them. And you know what, to make life easy for us, we'll just pick them out uh, by hand so they're easier to remember. Um, and again, you don't have to do three, you can do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can do two cards, you can do one card, you can you can really go crazy. Um, I'll take two sevens and an ace, all right? So we have these cards, ace of diamonds, seven of clubs, and seven of hearts. Taking these, putting them on top of the other pile. So you told them to take it out of this, remember them, put them on top of the other pile. And then once that's complete, Tell them to give this packet a cut. Just, just sells the effect a bit more. Tell them to give this packet a cut, like this. So now they're lost somewhere in the center, and now you come back around. At this point, you're gonna give the deck a ref, uh, riffle shuffle. So I recommend you grabbing your finger, your, um, for these four fingers go on top, thumb on the bottom. Make the bottoms face each other. This way they're gonna go back into their normal facing order. Riffle them together and push in, maybe to give it a uh, couple of strip cuts, block cuts, overhand shuffles, whatever you want to do. And uh, what this pretty much did was it restored the deck back into orientating uh, the same way. And if you spread out the cards now, you'll see the three cards that were moved facing the opposite direction. So by doing a quick eyeball here, I could find one card is here. Uh, what are the other cards? One card is here. And the last card is, the last card is here somewhere. I am sure of it, because if it's not here, then then what was even the point of this?
Oh, I feel so stupid. I'm looking in the center of the deck and the last card's right on top. So I pulled out those three cards and check it out. If we take a look, the seven of clubs, seven of hearts, and the ace of diamonds all found easily. And if you're interested in the background of this effect, I learned the theory of this from the Encyclopedia Card Tricks, but I decided to come up with this effect myself. So uh, there you have it. We were that close. We'll make it next time. Love you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you really soon.